Hi, welcome back to the Gondo Tech Learning Channel. Today we are here with another exciting video in terms of the Kafka. So this is the second part of uh, the Kafka uh, uh, course, which uh, in the first one, uh, which is already on in our YouTube channel, we talked about uh, about uh, some introductions about the Kafka, and then we had a beautiful walkthrough. Uh, to show you how to um, bring the Kafka on your Windows and how to configure it and how to uh, run it. And then we did some sort of small tests to make sure your Kafka is up and running and it's working. So uh, this is the second part. The third part is coming uh, exactly after war, right after this video. And uh, so to, to make the videos basically in in, uh, in the a certain amount of the time and uh, reasonable basically uh, time size so uh, we have split uh, this video which is fairly basically long uh, to two uh, part uh, as a part two and part three and uh, so in this part uh, actually we talk about uh, basically the first stage and then uh, the first part of the implementation and then in the second in the third one we were talk we, were, we were talk about uh, we will talk about the uh, second part of the implementation uh, in terms of the Kafka so please uh, basically uh, look into our Facebook uh, account and Instagram account uh, you can follow us there and then uh, we have a lot of basically uh exciting uh, things cool things and not and uh, uh, news in there and uh, we can basically keep updating you via these basically channels and also please do subscribe to our channel uh, the youtube channel uh, to make us basically uh, supported and also um, um, uh, receiving any notification in case of new videos in there so uh, as part of the uh, this video we are going to uh, a case study which we basically introdu introduce here and uh, it's sort of a microservices architecture uh, for ordering system this is an example for you to um, have a feeling uh, about how the basically kafka is interacting and uh, how to how Kafka is being used by, uh, by the other basically applications. And as part of this microservices architecture, we are using Kafka uh, between these microservices and let them interact with each other via the Kafka stream. So this basically uh, case study is sort of a scaffolding of uh, using the Kafka and also the microservices. So uh, you can by basically watching this video you can easily expand or and extend basically this uh, um, uh, example uh, to be as a commercial uh, application or commercial um, uh, uh, system so as part of this ordering system we have we will have the ordering uh, service we have uh, inventory micro microservice, we have payment microservice, we have dispatch microservice, and we have reporting microservice. Just to let you know, as I said, this is the scaffolding microservices architecture. And uh, uh, so uh, we don't have any business logic behind the inventory service or payment service or uh, other things. These are just basically uh, being mocked uh, to basically to acting as an inventory service. We just want to show you because because in these videos we are interested on Kafka interactions, not in in, term, in terms of how the inventory service is working. So uh, that's why I'm saying uh, you can easily expand it to the reality and to the real project like a, um, ex exact inventory service and so on. So in the second part, actually. Uh, I'm going through the architecture which I have created here to show you how these microservices are interacting uh, with each other. So as you can see, we have got uh, the, the proper microservices pipeline here from ordering service going down and then back to the reporting service. And basically these two uh, microservices are interacting with the uh, user client or any other basically parties which we need to uh, interact with. So uh, 
uh, as you can see we have got basically these microservices which is going through the ordering service and then inventory service which is interacting with the warehouse we have then payment service in the next stage and then the dispatch service and at the end uh, all goes back to the reporting service so to just basically uh, let you know all these uh, microservices which is ordering inventory payment and dispatch are straight away interacting with the reporting service as well this reporting service is uh, has got basically a couple of uh, goals uh, to be here as uh, basically uh, one of the chain one of the one piece of the chain so uh, um, the reporting service could be used uh, as a um, analytic service or um, in, um, logging service monitoring service or any basically uh, announcement which need to basically go back to the end user so it could be used for anything uh, because it's basically collecting all the information in terms of the microservices which uh, basically are present here and uh, any of basically these microservices reporting back to the uh, reporting service to inform uh, anyone who are who is in charge uh, to see oh, okay uh, where the order at the moment is basically placed and sitting uh, within this pipeline so uh, in the middle of these basic microservices as you can see we have got some uh, kafka topics and uh, so um, and also uh, between basically each uh, microservice and the reporting services we have got a, a specific reported uh, topic which is collecting all the informations it's like a report and like a logging system so it's basically receiving all the information here and then report back uh, consumed by the, by the reporting service so in these three topics which is underneath of all these microservices we have got a, a poco class which is the content uh, the, the structure of the message which is going through these basically three topics and on top of the reported topic we have got another basically type of message which is report message which has got this basically a structure so uh, uh, there is an order which is basically moving around of the around these basic microservices in a submitted topic validated topic and then process topic and uh, i just basically introduced a very simple uh, basically order structure which is id order id product id product name uh, quantity price created on uh, which is going through these basic topics and then as a report we have got the report id and the whole order ob object which is coming from this structure and status uh, sorry details and then a status and created on and as part of the status we just basically giving uh, more uh, clue to the reporting service to say okay this status could be order submitted which means the ordering service has pushed uh, the order inside the submitted <clears throat> topic and the order validated uh, which will be basically report coming from the inventory service once it validate the order and put it in the validated topic order out of stock so uh, in here I, I put the parentheses here and say uh, apart from uh, reporting the good things from the microservices to the reporting service we're gonna report the bad things as well let's say uh, the inventory service at the moment uh, there is no proper business logic there uh, as part of our implementation the only thing I just consider is to say let's say the quantity uh, basically if uh, is more than five then uh, I would say okay this is out of stock and I will create a report which uh, has got the status of order out, out of stock and if it's less than five then it's going to be validated automatically and go to the validated topic also in the payment basically service we don't have basically uh, proper uh, business logic we have uh, such a such a thing like uh, considering the price the prices are generating between 1 to 100 and if the prices are above 50 then we will say payment is failed otherwise it's going to be pro uh, payment processed and it will be added to the process topic 
and uh, once the order the dispatch service has uh, consumed the process basically uh, orders then uh, it will send a report by order dispatch status to the reporting service to say okay the order now dispatched out so this is the whole life cycle of the orders which is happening in this architecture so uh, just to bear in your mind any of these or uh, any of these microservices are uh, publishing um, one or two basically uh, messages into the uh, kafka topics for let's say the ordering service uh, once is basically uh, pushing the um, so it is pushed the um, order into the submitted topic and also it will push the report into the reported topic to say the order has been submitted then in the inventory uh, service we would have two publisher and one subscriber which the uh, it will subscribe the submitted order from the from this topic and then uh, um, either it's basically validated or not it will publish it into the um, reporting service here and also if it's validated it will uh, publish it to the validated topic the same for publish payment service and uh, for dispatch is just consuming the from the process topic and then publish the report to say okay the order has been dis dispatched so this is all basically is happening in this architecture so uh, uh, apart from that uh, these topics um, we basically we focus on another concept in the kafka which is scaling um, the uh, basically the microservices so to in order to achieve this goal uh, what we need to do we have to uh, basically uh, give that ability to the uh, uh, to the architecture to be able to scale up or down in order to do that we have to uh, create uh, multiple partitions inside each topic so uh, you might it, it, there is it might be a question raised on in your mind oh what's a partition so no worry about that just watch basically our previous video uh, <clears throat> which is part one so uh, we already talked about all these uh, um, terminologies within the kafka so you can easily <clears throat> get your head around what is top, uh, what is topic, what is partitions. So in order to achieve the scaling inside our uh, architecture, we have to uh, we have to have the multiple partitions within topics which we need to scale up that microservice. So in this case, uh, I have uh, I will create as part of our implementation. I will create. Uh, three partitions per each topic so in this case you can scale up up to three subscribers for your um, <clears throat> partitions for your microservice and uh, just bear in your mind if you increase more than three uh, subscriber or uh, for your microservices then uh, it's going to be ideal that's it dead that's it so uh, don't try to scale up more than three part uh, three uh, microservices in this architecture if you want to scale it up more you just create more partitions in your topics let's say 6 12 whatever you want as you wish so um, it's up to your basically uh, architectural uh, basically um, decision that's it and uh, but in here for our example i just stick to the three partitions so um, and also as part of this architecture uh, you might have uh, some of the microservices uh, basically um, uh, which basically using more time uh, to process the job uh, so there is a time consumption in there and they are may causing delay in your pipeline and uh, accordingly uh, low performance or uh, basically um, slower basically uh, result so in that's why the scaling the microservices are coming into the consideration and uh, that's why you would have you would be able to scale up your uh, service whenever you want and spin up one instance of this uh, service and just make your uh, pipeline more performant 
for this example i have created a, uh, some delay in the payment service so you will see every 10 seconds it's going to process the uh, validated uh, orders so that's why it's causing some delay inside the reporting service and then we are going to spin up uh, this micro more than one microservice uh, payment microservice to see how the process will be improved so bear with us uh, now uh, basically i just basically make the uh, story short and go uh, to the basic implementation to see how we are impl implementing this macro service. Bear with us. Right, so um, uh, this is the architecture which we already discussed. So uh, what we're going to do now, firstly, we are going to um, spin up the uh, Zookeeper and then Kafka uh, environment to basically to have it um, up and running. Then we're going to create each of these topics in our Kafka stream and then go through the Visual Studio implementation to see how we are implementing all these things as part of our example. So uh, in terms of basically the Kafka uh, side, uh, as I said earlier, don't worry about that. Just watch the previous video, which is part one and uh, to see how to create the topics, how to basically uh, make your Kafka up and running in your environment. Awesome. So uh, this is my Kafka folder, which basically is already been uh, configured and also um, ready to be spin to be a spin up uh, to be spin up. And uh, so the first thing I'm, I'm going to do, I will create a command prompt here and uh, put my commands here. So to just uh, speed up uh, the video uh, the process uh, in video and also uh, avoiding any mistake to just causing some delay i just uh, uh, ready made everything i just show you uh, them and also explain uh, whenever is required so now we have got the zookeeper is up and running i'm gonna create another command prompt so you can use command prompt you can use uh, shell wherever is convenient for you now the kafka server i'm going to run it so some of these basically uh, 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 information within these lines it might be uh, a bit strange for you or you you feel unfamiliar unfamiliar familiar with there with them so as i said don't worry just watch the previous video that's it watch part one you will be completely ready for this video then so uh, I will create another uh, command prompt because uh, I'm gonna check if there is any topic at the moment available which uh, this com um, command is giving you okay so seems there is no uh, topic available the next thing is uh, we are going to create a um, topic for ourselves so uh, we have four topics to open to create the first topic is uh, submitted orders and as you can see uh, in partition side I've uh, I, by default I use three you can change it to anything there is uh, we just we, we are not going to create any replication for our topics uh, but in reality it's better to have uh, a mirror topic for yourself uh, to just make sure for if for any reasons your topic is gone you have got another basically backup uh, in terms of the data in there so uh, there is no case of uh, losing any uh, messages in your topic but in here we just stick to one we create one topic so the first topic has been created the next one is going to be validated and third one is going to be processed and the last one is going to be reported awesome so now I'm going to have a look again to see the list of the topic which I've got in my Kafka stream. Super. So as you can see, 
these four topics has already been created and the Kafka now is ready to um, accept our messages and then uh, provide our messages whenever is required okay cool so this part has been finished now uh, we are going to so as part of this basically as part of this architecture we need these microservices uh, to be able to interact in with, uh, with each other but uh, to make the code is basically a bit more cleaner uh, so I just create uh, a couple of uh, class libraries in .NET standard uh, to basically to avoid any duplications of the code in there. So um, uh, one of the basic things which we uh, basically need is uh, to control the app settings because we what we're gonna do we are providing the topic names and uh, uh, bootstrap basically uh, servers uh, URLs via the app setting to give that basically ability to the microservices whenever there is any changes in Kafka environment or topics names we can easily just go to the app setting change it and then uh, spin up um, the microservice that's it so in order to achieve that we are we have a app setting per each microservice which all the configurations are uh, available there so we have one project for app setting we have one class library for uh, kafka uh, itself which is going to basically to have publisher and subscriber because the kafka side is being used in everywhere in all microservices so it's better to have one centric place and then just call it accordingly and we have uh, one more basically uh, class library which is basically containing all these uh, poco classes in terms of the uh, message uh, payload <clears throat> so uh, now I'm going back to my uh, uh, basically uh, solution here and uh, so in here uh, as you can see we have got the solution uh, without any project is completely uh, plain so uh, what we're gonna do now we are going to um, create the first project which is which is going to be a dot and standard library and I will call it I will call it a domain dot app settings so yes it's going to be created shortly bingo so as part of this, uh, we would have um, in the app settings, I'm just going to rename the class name to app settings. Yes, please. And then uh, what I'm going to do, I will basically uh, bring the code here to just uh, show you. Okay, so now what we have we have a, uh, a static class which is app setting and this app setting is going to uh, provide two methods for us one is get configuration which is going through the app setting structure and the other one is uh, uh, the other one is uh, get topic name so uh, i will i will i will show you uh, all the things let me let me get one of the uh, one of the uh, app settings here to basically to give you uh, more hint uh, how basically it looks like and uh, give you more basically f uh, better feeling about uh, how it looks like so as you can see uh, the Kafka uh, so uh, this is the structure I have uh, I will provide for my uh, microservices uh, app settings so uh, the first thing is it's got a parent which is the Kafka settings and this Kafka settings contains uh, all these uh, configurations for any publishers or producer 
and any consumers which at the moment in here we don't have any consumers but the structure would be exactly the same as the producer and under the producer we would have all the publishers which are basically being used by that specific microservices for this case uh, for instance we have two producers one is submitted the other one is reported so the submitted uh, orders will be uh, pushed to the submitted orders a topic and the reported ones are going to the reported orders topic and also there is a bootstrap servers which has got the url for the broker which is basically kafka topic is using that so uh, all the microservices will use the same structures and uh, uh, i just kept it basically more organized to be able to make it more generic in terms of uh, fetching the data so as you can see this is the parent which will be used here for getting the configuration for producer and uh, consumer or subscriber builders because those two objects we will be we will basically uh, discuss about that in uh, in a minute uh, so uh, we are just basically using this basically a structure to uh, access to these values within the uh, app settings also in terms of the get topic name uh, the structure we are using is the kafka settings for instance and then producers and then the submitted or reported uh, to get the uh, submitted order so we are just going to create a simple method to access the you know these are the the commands which dev definitely you are basically aware of them in terms of the configuration as part of the i configuration uh, class so you would have the get section you put the section which you are interested to get the children from there which is the kafka settings and producer and then uh, we just convert it to the dictionary of the key and values because the kafka uh, builders and uh, kafka producer builder and kafka consumer builder are using this list of the um, key pair values so that's why we converting them to those basic things so let's basically uh, reference to these uh, classes it's just simple thing which you normally use so access to your uh, classes these are the common things within the visual studio which normally you use to bring your uh, codes in the right place so uh, the app setting is fairly uh, ready. So I'm going to run a build to see my project is building now. Awesome. So the second project which I need to create is um, uh, in terms of the models. So uh, I will create another class library, which is going to domain.models and then create it. So uh, the first POCO class which I need is the order and as part of my order uh, class uh, we are just following the same structure as we have in the um, in our architecture which we already discussed it in the uh, five minutes ago just earlier so uh, this is the order with ID product ID and the other things i just added them <clears throat> accordingly the second class which we require is um, going to have a report and again it's gonna use the same structure as we already discussed in our architecture so i just add them here that's it and uh, the third one is uh, the enum which is uh, a status and a status has got those basically states which we already discussed in the architecture so now we have created all the required things so this is the order which is going back to the order this is a status which is going back to the status we have order submitted order validated out of store processed failed and dispatch in there so the domain is also 
now ready so these classes and this enum is ready now <clears throat> and the last piece of the puzzle for this part is creating a, a Kafka um, library domain dot Kafka so again I would create a Kafka service which contains all the required information for us. So I would copy the required things. Okay, bingo. So now we have the required information in Kafka uh, settings. So let me explain uh, each part in this implementation. So this Kafka service has got two main uh, two main uh, methods. Uh, one of them is publisher, and the other one is subscriber. So the publisher is getting the topic and connect it, and then pushing the data as a JSON format or JSON format a string into the um, Kafka in your topic and then the subscriber will be connected to your topic and then consume the data from there. So it's fairly a st straightforward uh, process. So to achieve that, uh, we are sending the configuration for into our Kafka uh, services constructor to basically to be able to configure our Kafka before running the publishers and uh, subscribers. So in order to do that, we need to have the basically the producer builder and consumer builder and uh, basically to be able to use and produce the data or subscribe the data and also as part of basically uh, building this uh, producer and consumer we need to have the producer config and consumer config because each basically topic has got um, each producer or subscriber required to have some configuration basic configuration to be able to communicate with so we will get into them one by one so let's basically introduce or reference the uh, things and uh, the other thing which you can see here uh, for basically our Kafka interactions we are using the NuGet package named Confluent Kafka which is the most basically famous one and uh, to achieve that uh, just uh, it's, an, it's a simple NuGet package just go there and uh, install it that's it and in your project and then you would be able to use all the features uh, within the Kafka Confluent Kafka simple as that so as you can see we are going to just install the uh, Kafka Confluent Kafka here so now all the required things will be available so the configuration you already uh, aware of that we are going to just add it so as you can see in our Kafka side we are using the app setting because we are fetching the Kafka uh, configurations from there. So you just need to uh, actually uh, add the project in here and then bingo, you would have uh, the app settings available here. So you, what it does, it's just using the get config. You remember the get config, giving the configuration object and then uh, asking for the producer setting so if you remember in our configuration we were interested on uh, producer or consumer from the app setting so this producer is pointing to this producer and this consumer will pointing to the consumer which is not available at the moment here so it definitely it will return null in this case and then if you go to the get config <clears throat> 
it will basically fetch the Kaf uh, Kafka uh, settings, which is here. And then it's using colon, which is saying, okay, go to my children. And the children is key, which is basically, in our case, is producer or consumer. And then uh, pick all the information in these uh, children. That's it. So simple as that. Cool. So now uh, the next step is uh, preparing the Kafka producer and uh, consumer builder uh, to make it ready for use. So in the constructor, we just basically checking the producer if there is any uh, setting for that in the app setting. Then we are going to build up the producer config. The producer config has got a variety of configurations. I will show you here, in here. And as you want and you require, you just need to set them here. That's it. Simple as that. So for our case, uh, which we basically using the local Kafka, we just need to provide the uh, bootstrap servers, which is the Kafka URL and the booker actually URL. And uh, that's it. Simple as that. And then once we have the producer config available, we just need to uh, create a producer builder and then uh, give that configuration to say, OK, uh, please prepare or build this producer builder based on this configuration. That's it. And done. For the consumer, exactly the same. The only thing is, in the conf consumer side, we, we need basically to have more configurations available. Uh, one of them is bootstrap servers, which is basically exactly the same as what we do for the producer. The second most important thing is group ID. So let me give you a hint. So whenever you, uh, you want to spin up more consumers uh, to use same basically Kafka topic, then it's important to say, okay, I want these consumers to be in the same group or to the different groups. So whenever you use the consumers in the same group, then they are looking at the same topic and also the partitions within that topic will be spread across these subscribers. So just bear in your mind about this. That's very important. So for scaling purposes, you need to have the same uh, group ID. So that's why we use basically this consumer, uh, basically group ID, which at the moment in this configuration, we don't have it because this subscriber, uh, this, this basically configuration doesn't have the consumer. But I will show you once we get to that stage. It's fairly simple. It's just one group ID and then value. And uh, the auto offset reset, which is saying, OK, do you want to every, every every time you spin up the consumer, do you want to start from beginning or to start from the last save point which you stopped the consumer? Simple as that. Which for example the earliest is means basically a start from the most recent offset, which we last time we basically fetched it to avoid any duplications within the reading. So always is picking the new uh, data from the from that specific topic so that's really important be careful about uh, offset reset because uh, it's totally purely up to your uh, architectural um, decision to say okay uh, do you need to every time you spin up this uh, the consumer start from beginning because some of the uh, architectures or services are always uh, looking to the whole basically Kafka uh, topic from beginning to the end. And uh, they don't care about the offset. They just go, OK, go start from beginning, read all. That's it. Simple as that. So and then the consumer builder, again, the same as you can see. The only thing is here, the subscribe, uh, which is saying, OK, OK, I want to subscribe to this topic name. So this is the only thing which you need to configure before you start subscribing. So you need to introduce your topic name there. And that's it. Bingo. So let's have a look to the uh, publisher and subscriber to see what we have in there. So uh, as you can see, it's fairly simple and clear. Uh, what you do is you will receive the topic name and the data 
and just say okay producer builder please produce the uh, this data in my topic so you just create a message which is coming from the uh, basically uh, kafka confluent kafka uh, whole world and just say okay i want to create a message with no keys but with this data and this data is json format for me because i'm going to just serialize it in uh, outside and then inject it into the publish and then uh, send it to the topic and uh, at the end the consumer will fetch the data and give us the that json string we just need to deserialize it to our object to have the right value and simple as that so this is the fairly simple publisher and subscriber in our uh, object as you can see so uh, um, i think uh, now uh, we are almost uh, ready so our um, scaffolding and the fundamental things in our uh, solution now is ready uh, to go through the microservices and see how they are going to be implemented and use the kafka topics so um, uh, <clears throat> we will basically continue uh, talking about uh, details about basically the microservices implementation in our next video which is coming right after this this one so just bear with us and uh, uh, basically watch the youtube channel and uh, as soon as basically so it will be it will be it will be coming uh, shortly and you can basically continue watching uh, what will be going on uh, in the next stage in terms of the microservices and how this microservice architecture will be working and uh, within our case study so thank you very much for watching this video uh, please do subscribe to our channel to, to your youtube channel and also follow us in instagram and facebook uh, uh, to be uh, more in touch uh, in terms of uh, whatever we have in uh, gondo tech so thank you thank you very much and uh, hope you enjoyed this video